And you can find out the five things you didn't know about George Washington. Remember, in a real economic crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. You know, you wonder what in hell scares people about talking about America's foundation of, of faith. I, I think we should just kind of keep this clean, keep it simple, go back to what our founders and our founding documents meant. They're quite clear. It's pretty simple. It is the best book on George Washington and I have ever read because it is so simple. <laughs> One of the city's most humble and lovable characters was... Seems like America, for some reason or another, is interested now in our founding fathers and meeting who they really, truly are. The real George Washington. It's the first in a series, and I love it because it's mainly his words. Um, and you get to know who he was. I didn't really know why he was called the Indispensable Man. Um, <coughs> sorry, I... I like George Washington an awful lot, and um, he's the kind of guy that I've been looking for. I think we all have. We've been looking for a guy who is uh, just honest. If only Underdog were here. One of the city's most humble and lovable characters was Shoeshine Boy. Well, I'll finish, sir. Thanks, Shoeshine Boy. You're humble and lovable. Bless you, sir. I love, love this guy. All he wanted to do was go to Mount Vernon and be a farmer. After he won the Revolutionary War, he went back to be that farmer in Mount Vernon. And things started to fall apart, and they came knocking at his door. I said, George, we need you, because the whole thing is falling apart. Phrasing, but I think it was pretty close to Have I not yet done enough for my country? He was a revered figure. He was, that's my favorite painting of him. He was a revered figure. He was a guy, this was actually a painting done on the, um, just on the words of one of the, I think it was a farmer if I'm not mistaken. This is a guy who used to sit on top of a white horse in the middle of a battle and he never got shot. They thought this guy was God. They thought this guy was God. And when he put his glasses on, he said, I am sorry. grown old and gray in the service of my country. This seems like such a silly story, but it goes to the power of George Washington. I think what I like about George Washington is most of the choices he made, he didn't want to make. Most of the things he did, he didn't want to do. It was just doing the right thing. That's what mattered. <laughs> he is the co-author of the true story of America's most indispensable man. Also, Earl Taylor. He is the president of the Center for Constitutional Studies. He travels around the country. And he talks about George Washington. How are you guys? First of all, you know, you and I met, I don't know, about a year ago? About a year. Yeah. And I think I was a little like I am now, just a weepy mess when I saw you, because I love, love this guy. <laughs> well, you know, you said uh, before we started that uh, people are beginning to wake up. I, I think that Americans are looking for somebody like George Washington here. But there was something in him. But there was something in him. They respected him, and as you said in your intro, he was almost godlike. That's a painting in the on, in our capital today. Can we can we show that? I don't think most most people don't know this. Do we have do we have the painting in the capital? This is, and I think Dan Brown even in his book talks about this. This new Dan Brown book that's out. Yeah. This is uh, what is the name of this? 
Tainted at the theosis of George Washington. Tainted at the theosis of George Washington. Yes, that. <laughs> if, you look, if you look straight up, here you see George Washington, and um, he's sitting on a throne, and he's becoming godlike. What is the significance of this? Apotheosis is actually a Latin word which means the raising of, of a human to a godlike quality. And that's what they felt like him. They could totally trust him. We have him here. Was this controversial to raise him? Because I know this, and I've heard, I've heard two uh, stories on this. I've heard one uh, that it was, uh, he was too godlike. And, uh, and, and the other, uh, well, it's the same story, I guess. One is that he was too godlike, um, and, you know, our presidents aren't gods. And uh, the other is that it was uh, an affront to religious people to have this. Um, and, but it's the statue that was supposed to go underneath this painting that was sitting in the basement for so many years or sitting someplace uh, unnoticed. The, 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 the picture uh, or the, uh, the statue of George Washington sitting in a chair like a great god. Mm -hmm. it, it was, why was this controversial at the time? for them to be able to come out and say? Well, there were some people who disagreed with him, but they weren't in control. They, they were in the minority. They didn't... What I'm, but, but they weren't in control. They, they were in the minority. They didn't... What I'm, but what I'm asking is, is, I guess, when you, when you look at him this way, is this saying that he is... You know, you, you as people can rise up to great things, or he was just godlike? I Which is it? Was it a former? The former. They didn't think he was God. Right. But he had some attributes that were God-like. I've noticed that Benjamin Franklin, how, were Frank, were they real close friends, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington, or not? And they were friends. Um, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington had one thing in common that I've seen that, uh, that I think is fantastic, and that is the list that they would start their day and end their day with. Either? You're talking about the 13 attributes that, yeah. he, uh, that, yeah. and that Franklin and that worked on? His it, rules of civility is what he called them. Right. And they're great for young people today. Uh, I read the stories of the founders, and all of them, all of them, didn't want to do what they did. They didn't want to be that person. They didn't want to say those things. They didn't, you know, it, it, I, I get the sense from all of the founders, they were like, really? Me again? You know what I mean? They did it out of duty and honor, mainly to God. To God. Um, they just, they, they all thought and, and I think knew that this is a this is this is a God thing that's happening here. Right. This is this is a God thing that's happening here. Right. When you consider who these men were and what they accomplished in reading who they were, knowing what they created, knowing what they created, this isn't our land, this is his land. Knowing that this is not these aren't our rights. Um, knowing that he'll protect and knowing also the story. I mean I pray every night. I mean I pray every night. As you know, I've 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 read the the words in the diaries of many of the founders. It's really true. When you read these guys, it's alive. It's like, you know, reading the scripture. It's like reading the Bible. It's alive today. Right. And it only comes alive when you alive. need it. And it's alive. You read the words of these guys, and it's... Um, it's the same spirit you feel when you read the scripture. Yeah, it is. It is. Who what? else? Um, up in the what? corner, yes. Uh, I've made George Washington faith, hope, and charity. Uh, I've made George Washington faith, hope, and charity. It's ironic to me that we make up a lie about I shall not tell a lie. So many great truth stories with him. I made Washington hope because I was trying to figure out why that Obama hope didn't work. And because it's false hope. It's not telling you the truth. And and it's alive. And it only comes alive when you Why need it. George Washington help us restore America. Oh my gosh. How weird. Like if we can be more like him. If we can strive to be more like him. Um, 
will survive.